Okay, so here's the code we wrote in the previous tutorial. This way of chaining these method calls is what's referred to as fluent API. You can chain method calls one after the other till you get the object we want. But in this tutorial, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna separate these different calls out so that we know what's going on. Okay, so the first line is pretty simple. I'm using the client builder dot new client to get a client object. But this is what is the fluent API. This is where you have method chaining. So let's break this up. So the first thing we do here is client.target and we give it a target. We give it a URL where the client needs to point to. So I'm gonna take this out. Let me actually remove this return value here. So I'm gonna take this part out and I'm gonna assign it to a new local variable. Eclipse helps us identify what the type is. Now the type happens to be web target. We point the client to a target using the target method and we get back as an object of web target. All right, so now I can do a target dot request dot get. Now let me split target dot request up. And again, I'm gonna use Eclipse to assign to a new local variable. Turns out what we get back is a builder. I'm gonna call this builder. Now Eclipse has done the import for us. So this is of type invocation dot builder. So that's what's imported. All right, so now we get a builder back. Now I'm gonna do a builder dot get. And now if I assign this, I should get a response. And there you go, we get a response. So these are the three steps that are happening that we um, it in the previous video, but this is broken down so that we have a better idea of what's going on here. When you do a client.target, when you point a client to a target location, a target URL, what you get back is an object of web target. So the client itself is something that you want to initialize once per application. Once you have established that you're going to be making a REST API call, you make this call, client builder dot new client and get hold of a client instance. Now with this client instance, you can make multiple REST API calls. Now the first thing you need to do in order to make a REST API call from this client instance is to get hold of a web target object. The way to get a web target object is to do this, client.target, point it to a URL, and now we get the web target. Every time you do a client.target, you get a new instance of web target. So you can create multiple web targets per execution of your client code. Now here I'm just getting one web target instance. And now with this web target instance, I create what's called a builder by preparing this request. So when I get a web target, I'm not really all set to make that request. I need to create a request and I build it. That's how the API works in JaxRS. So I first build a request, by doing a target dot request and I get hold of a builder. Now I can use this builder to build my request. I can do a bunch of stuff. I can configure how the request should be. I'm not doing any of that here, but you could potentially do that with this builder. Now, once you've configured the builder and you're ready to make a request, then you do a builder dot method. Now here I'm doing a get. Now let me see what are the other methods in the builder. You see here there is delete, there is get, there is head, there is post which accepts the entity itself as an argument, there is put. So all the HTTP methods that we have seen is available over here. Now here I'm just gonna do a get and then I get the response back and now I do a response.read entity. This part hasn't changed. All right, so the, hopefully this gives you an idea of what are the steps involved and what actually happens when you do that fluent API. Now that we have understood this, let me put this back to the way the code was before. I'm gonna do a bunch of undos and uh, get this back to the response. I'm gonna break this down into multiple lines even though it's the same fluent API. I'm gonna demonstrate a couple of configurations you can do to configure how this request gets sent. Now the request method takes in a few parameters. So one of the parameters it takes is if I do a control space here, you see there is a request of media type. This is where you specify what the media type of your request should be. Now I'm gonna choose this and say media type dot. So this lets 
this request know that you need JSON response. We've already seen that this is just a string in the previous course. So all we're doing is sending it a string, which is media type dot application JSON. So this way you can send whatever content type you need. So when you pass that in the request, it's gonna send that in the accept header. The other configuration we can do is in using the get. Now the get has a bunch of signatures. If you do a control space here, you see there is a get without any arguments which is what we've used. There's also a get which takes in an argument, which is, a, which is a class. Now what this lets you do is specify upfront what is the type that you are interested in in the response. Now you see here, we just did a generic get, we got the response, and then we did a response.read entity of message.class. Now if you were to tell this get method that what you're gonna get back is a particular class, then what the Jersey implementation does is once it gets the response, it's gonna try and convert that response to an instance of the class that you've passed. So if I were to do this, if I were to say get off message.class, what this returns is an instance of message.class. Whatever um, response it gets, it's gonna try and convert that into a message instance. So this is gonna return me a message instance. I'm gonna change this to message and I'm gonna call this message. Now I don't need to do this. I can directly print the response. So I'm gonna execute this and let's make sure it works. There you see, we get hello world. So things work as usual. I can verify this again by making a call to message ID two. And we should get hello jersey, yes we do. All right, so this is, uh, the, you know, these are two ways in which you can configure what goes on over here. Another quick uh, tip that has helped me when I'm troubleshooting this is, now let's say you're, you're accepting a particular class in your code and there is some error in converting from that stream to an instance of the class, right? So basically what this does is when it gets a response in JSON, it tries to unmarshal it, right? It creates an object out of it. But now let's say there is something wrong with your response or there is something wrong with your class itself and it's unable to unmarshal it. You get a nasty error, but it's hard to troubleshoot it. So the trick that I use is, rather than have a message here, I just use string.class. Now string, I'm gonna change this because it's gonna return string back. And let me comment this out. Now since what you're passing is a string, uh, the JAXRS library here is gonna convert the response to a string. Since the HTTP protocol does have content as string, this should be a trivial thing to do. There are not gonna be any errors. So when you get this, the value here, message, is gonna be the actual payload that you get back from HTTP. So if I were to print this out of uh, the message, I'm gonna get the actual payload. Let's try this. Well, there you go. You see, you're getting the JSON payload over here. So this is something that the library is doing is just getting the response here and saying, okay, this user wants it to be returned as a string. We've already got a string, so this is easy. So it's gonna convert that to a string and uh, in an instance of a string class, and that's what I can use to print out and see what the actual response that I've got back is. But uh, this is this is very, I found this to be very handy for debugging, but you don't really have to do this. Uh, there is this handy shortcut here for passing in the actual class itself that you want the library to unmarshal to, so that you get an actual Java instance that is ready to use in your client code.